elementary, my dear Watson. Why is it elementary? Because of impermanence, being that you have good days and you have bad days, and you have good moods and sad moods and bad moods and depressive moods and elated moods, and they are what they are when they are. And to be honest, you can't control them. They do what they want, and they are what they are when they are. And they're constantly changing, which proves impermanence on that level, on that level. And so your feelings change, your thoughts change. Your thoughts change your feelings, and your feelings change your thoughts, and they rebound off each other. And your reactions change, and your speech changes, and things are what they are, and you are what you are, when you are, how you are, in the present moment, because that's all there is, that's happening, that's real, and all of these feelings are changing, and coming and going away, they're arising and they're ceasing, just as your thoughts are arising and ceasing, they are hence not self. If they were self, they'd be still there, because you're still there. But the feeling is gone, it's changed. The thought has gone, it's changed, it's a different thought now to the one that was in what you consider the past, what I consider to be your memory. That's the past, your memory. The future is your imagination and reality is now. And so how you're feeling and how you're thinking. The first question that arises is, can you control it? Normally the case is no. Can you stop it? No. Can you watch it? Yes. Can you see it? Well, if you practice, how do you practice? Well, you begin with the breath. Why do you begin with the breath? Because focusing on the breath while simultaneously using a kata like buddho or putto, which means awakened, will make you more sensitive and aware to what is happening within and it will also make you aware of the fact that you're unable to focus and you keep drifting off. That's the first thing you notice when you start to meditate. And that's the first thing you're supposed to notice, that the mind drifts off. And when you notice this, you will develop the desire to not let the mind drift off. And this will develop the ability to make greater effort in sustaining the focus and not letting the mind drift from the breath whilst one is talking to somebody or eating or whatever, thinking and especially if you focus on the breath normally would be on the tip of your nose some people can't feel it so you can try your chest or your throat and feel the breath wherever you can feel it but you should try with the tip of your nose because if you try with the tip of your nose, then later you will continue to practice within the proper sequence of the levels of practice given by the Lord Buddha of the four Satipatthanas. The Satipatthansi, of which the first is mindfulness of the body, and you use the breath. And the first begins with the nose. And the second of those 16 steps of breath practice is knowing the breath passing the nose and the throat and the chest uh, both at the same time whilst maintaining awareness and mindfulness of what one is doing what one is saying and precisely this focus on the breath will make you more aware of what you're doing and saying and of how much purity or impurity is present within what you are doing and saying and thinking and feeling and you will see how your feelings and your thoughts react with each other. You will see how perception, you will 
study the five aggregates and you will learn that perception is the third or one of the th five aggregates and you will see that your thoughts and your feelings are connected through the transmission of perception and you'll be able to watch it happening and you'll be able to reverse engineer the problem when you find yourself suffering when you find yourself angry when you find yourself sad or depressed or frustrated look at your breath the first thing you do is to look at your breath let's say you're frustrated and angry look at your breath <laughs> notice the breath so reverse engineer it if thinking about something that makes you angry makes you angry and making you angry actually physically affects your body so that your breath becomes so erratic then maybe if you mindfully um, control your breath to calm itself then your mood will calm itself and then your thoughts will calm themselves and you'll slowly come to more mindfulness and that's called reverse engineering the situation and uh, all of these things come with meditation and focus on the breath and that's why you focus on the breath and so why are we doing things what are we thinking what are our motives are we looking within and looking at ourselves and how deeply are we looking at what is happening and how we are and what is causing us to be that way and if we're afraid and why and how we're reacting and what perceptions and memory associations have caused us to see this person as an enemy or this person as a friend or to think of that person and get angry and think of this person and feel love or happiness or laugh and see perception and how perception makes awareness arise and how that makes the brain think thoughts and remember things and make memory association with the smell of peaches that if you loved eating peaches and you meet a boy or a girl who smells of peaches you'll immediately feel attracted because of memory association you will see all of these things within and you will get to know yourself and this would be the base of the Siddhipatthana and of the Vipassana Gamatan the Gamatana Vipassana beginning with four Siddhipatthanas you hear academics speak of the seven Bojankas and the, and the four Siddhipatthanas or the 32 methods of the Bodhisattva or 37 and the Apidhamma and all of these are just academic ways of explaining the situation of an enlightened being but basically all you have to do is start to look within and to know the five aggregates and to watch them and to learn how to watch them and to learn how to use the breath to focus and keep aware and keep as soon as you notice you've wandered off you just don't worry about it flick back to the breath straight away because thinking about worrying about having wandered off means you're not meditating and that doesn't help either so just don't worry about it flick back to the breath just know oh I drifted off breathe again focus on the breath buddho buddho what am I thinking what am I feeling why am I doing it is it within my precepts or is it breaking my precepts if I speak to this person what I want to say how can I say it without breaking my precepts you'll be mindful to say these things so, end of some quantum dhamma. You don't need to be religious to examine yourself. And you'd be amazed at how deeply you can examine yourself and what you can find within. And when you know yourself, you are human, then you know others. And that is part of what the Buddha taught about the apinya, the special powers of knowing the mind and the heart of another and other things 
which we shall come to later because they are not things to be attained or desired they are things which happen when you practice properly so you shouldn't focus on them but I will talk about them and that was the end of one of my very belated Quantum Dhamma podcasts Ajahn Spencer signing off <laughs>